Hey, good afternoon everybody. Today I'm going to show you how I make chicken pot pie. Uh, right now I've got the oven heating up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit because I've got a couple of pie crusts ready-made defrosting on the counter here. I just used the store-bought ones for this. This is going to make two pies because to minimize on the crust calories what I'll do is I'll just use one crust on the bottom and finish it off with some buttered breadcrumbs on top after. Now I'm going to measure these vegetables and get them going, put them back in the freezer and get the chicken back in the fridge for the time being uh, because you've got two kinds of vegetables for this. You've got your boiled ones and the sautéed ones and I'm going to sauté the vegetables before I fry the chicken so I only have to use one cutting board. You should never do it the other way around with meat first then vegetables, always vegetables then meat. Uh, but briefly, here's the ingredients. So I'll get this back in the fridge. My regular viewers may note that uh, usually I don't measure but today I am. There's a reason for that. When you're making pies like this, um, you need fairly precise ingredients because there's only so much crust. There is a little give on the celery and onion and whatnot, which is another reason I'm only using one crust because if you put too much filling in, you don't have to worry about it closing or not. So I'll just pop a bit of water in here for now. I have baby carrots today just because I happen to have some in the fridge. So I will roughly fill up one cup and then slice those up. Now carrots being a root vegetable boil far better than they saute which is why I'm throwing them in with the peas and the carrots. I've washed the celery and trimmed the ends off because those are usually dry and for this you want to try to chop it as thin as you can. And while that does seem like a lot of celery, it does cook down. Then the onion. Any kind will do here. Yellow, Spanish, sweet, white, don't matter. I noticed while I was checking the vegetables that the oven is hot, but I'm going to get the chicken started first because this the uh, pie crusts only have to pre-bake for about 10 minutes. If you don't do that step, you will get mushy bottoms and nobody likes a mushy bottom on their pie crust. So this is a sort of butterfly for all of you real cooks out there. What I'm doing is I'm just basically opening it up so that it cooks quicker just cut it down the middle and open it up I'm gonna actually be dry frying these in a non-stick because the less grease in here the better there's a fair amount in the sauce but you just have to do it so I don't want to add any more to the pan than I have to and there's a little bit that's gonna have to go in the onions and celery I got the pan heating up over sort of medium, a little higher than medium. Now, you can see that this is going to kind of go funny, but we we'll do what we can here. I want to start with the cut open side first, make them easier to turn after. It's all firmed up. So now I'll put the pie crust in the oven. You can tell from the edges that these are nicely defrosted. If a little bit breaks off, just get rid of it. Now you want to take a fork and punch holes in the bottom. That's because if there's any air pockets in these, it will rise up and deform your crust. And this way it may still happen, but there will be enough air escaping that as soon as you come out you can like push it back down with a fork while they cool off and it's fine. So this is about halfway through. I'll just give you a zoom here just so you can see that it's halfway but not quite. You can see those white pieces right there. That means it's nearly cooked halfway through. Um, so what I'm going to do 
while I'm waiting to flip them is clean the cutting board. There's a few more white spots on here which means it's cooked nearly half the way through. Still feeling soft with the tongs. So I'm going to flip these now so they don't brown excessively on one side, but do let them sit until it feels firm all the way through. You want these completely cooked before they go in the sauce. A couple more minutes before the pie crust come out. It's starting to smoke a bit, so I'll just see how it's looking. Give it a quick flip. No, it's still too tender. See what I mean? When you start with the flat side at the first, it's just so much easier to flip, sort of like big chicken pancakes. Okay, so the fan can come off, the crusts are out. You can see there's a few bumps at the bottom, but it's still soft. So I can press those down quite nicely without the whole crust cracking and making a mess. And it should seal up on its own. And it's detecting a little bit too much moisture on these, so I'm going to flip them again. Now, don't worry if your pan gets kind of stuck up like that. One of the reasons I do it this way with the chicken first is that all of that lovely brown, apparently burnt, not really stuff on the bottom, will deglaze when I put the onions and the celery in. And some most moisture on those will just lift that right off and put it, all that flavor back in the sauce. Yeah, I had to go uh, check on the laundry. It's gone for a bit, so let's see. Oh, they're not burnt. That's good. Actually, just nice and toasty. I'll transfer the clean cutting board and let them cool off for a while. Now, that definitely does look like a stuck on mess. Not to worry. Just grab like a little spoon of butter like that. Add a bit of oil. The oil so the butter doesn't burn. And put in your chopped veg. This is where you want to season it. My chicken broth is salt free so I can control the sodium content. I always like to do that. Now, I am actually out of black pepper today, but I didn't want to put this recipe off any longer because I'd had to for outside constraints. So I'm going to put a bit of cayenne, okay? Like, don't put too much. You'll be sorry if you did. Same goes for the savory and sage. You want it to accent the dish, you don't want it to overpower it. If your onions have turned green, that's a sign that you probably have too much. But if you like it like that, just do it anyways. It is, after all, your dinner. Though I will likely catch some flack from traditional purists going, that's not how you make this. You can only make it the way my grandma did. Well, what are you watching for then? Never mind. Back to business. Look at that, eh? Yeah. See how fast that's deglazing? That's just amazing. So it wasn't actually burnt. And all that chicken flavor is going to go into the onions, which in turn will infuse the sauce. So I'm just going to give this some peace for the time being. While the onions are sautéing and the chicken is cooling, you can always find something to do. And that's one thing I didn't mention that I also like about this dish. It's very relaxed. You can do it in stages, okay? The pies will keep for a day or two in the fridge if you want to cook one after another, which is what I'm going to do today. You can also freeze these, which is awesome. Okay, so there's my flour for the sauce on the side. And for completeness, I've spooned some butter into the cup here, equal measure, half a cup, leveled it off. My regular viewers will note that I do not measure usually, but for this, if you want the sauce to come out, yeah, you have to. I'm not going to measure the butter for the breadcrumbs. So. I have a cup of breadcrumbs, and I'm going to visually estimate 
I would call that about two tablespoons of butter that I'll put in there. Now for this next part you can use two forks or um, one of those pastry things. Honestly, just get a glove. What you're going to do is just take the butter and rub it with the crumbs between your hands until it's nice and even. If you don't have gloves, well, you'll have to be washing your hands for a while after this and it should be really clean before you start, especially if you plan on freezing these things. So you can see the texture is basically still like breadcrumbs. They stick together just a little bit and that butter is going to add a bit more flavor to the dish and also help them brown nicely while they're cooking. Checking back on the vegetables, the pan is completely deglazed, but I've noticed there's way, way too much water in the bottom. So I'm going to turn the heat up a bit um, to cook that water out, because if you don't do that, it will um, come out in the oven while it's baking, and your sauce is going to get really runny and not so nice. So dry them out first. The chicken is cool enough to chop. Um, now, I could use the fork that I poked the pie crusts with because uh, I believe in using, reusing utensils wherever possible. I'm not going to do that for the simple reason that I personally hate the sound that the fork makes if you hit it with the knife when you're cutting. It makes me just go, ah. So, if you're like me, get a glove on and start chopping the chicken into nice small pieces. Keep your fingers away so A, you don't cut yourself and B, you don't add a little glove to the dinner. It will not taste like plastic now, but if you cut off a piece of the glove, it will. And considering how brown some of this is, if you don't have a good grip on it when you're trying to cut it, it will slide all over the board. And this is so nice, you don't want to lose any of this. The pan is looking dry right now. And I'll zoom in quick so you can see when you've got little like dark brown caramelized bits of onion and celery and um, it's smelling so good you can't stand it. That is the time to turn down the heat, not take it off the heat, turn it down and just transfer these to a bowl on the side. What you want to do is you want to give the pan Time to cool off just enough that when the butter hits it, it doesn't burn. It may brown a little, that's not going to hurt, but you definitely don't want burnt butter in this, okay? Put that back on the heat. Scrape out the butter as quick as you can. If there's a little bit in the bottom, don't fret none. Pour all the flour in at once. If you've never made a roux for a sauce, well, this is what you're doing now. And if there are a little couple of bits of onion or whatnot in the bottom, it does not matter. What matters is paying attention to this so you get it right. So pick up all the flour with your tongs from the sides and the bottom of the pan. Keep stirring it. I do have it on low right now because I want to have complete control of the heat. Once you have that all mixed in and you're satisfied that all the butter and the flour are in there, just let it cook on its own for a minute or so. And in that minute, what you're going to do is you're going to measure your chicken stock and your milk. So I got that all measured and I come back and you should put your nose over the pan at this point because this is not just visual, it's also olfactory. You want to smell a slightly nutty shortbread kind of flavor which means the flour is cooked but not burnt, hence the low heat. And don't be afraid to just let that go like that for a minute or two more until it smells right. 
because if you put the liquid in too early you can't take it back and you can ruin the whole dish don't be scared though just take your time and it won't actually be completely ruined the flavor will just taste raw which does kind of put it off once it's smelling just nummy there's two ways you can do this you can either add your chicken stock gradually or throw it all in at once I'll show you a bit of both so this is what will happen if you put it in a bit at a time look how fast that seizes up eh? it makes nearly a solid mass so the other way is just throw it all in and chase the lumps or you can kind of do it a bit of both and stir and pour at the same time which is what I'm doing so chase out as many lumps as you can before you add the milk which I have waiting in the wings in a bowl now the milk will further thin it out it's just going to be a lot easier if you do it like this first just when it's starting to look like library paste add the milk and again stir the lumps out and when that is creamy or velouté as they say take your onions and celery stir those in that will thicken immediately get your drained drained vegetables which I did a couple of times off camera because you don't want to be introducing too much liquid in at this point stir those in and since this is going to be going in the pies in a minute don't forget to turn your heat off you're just doing this to keep it warm oh my goodness it looks like the one in the store we don't even have the chicken in yet now this I do very slowly I should have put this in a bowl but it looks so nice on the cutting board because the last thing you want to do now is miss and lose half your chicken final stir to get all the flavors and all that lovely sauce mixed in wonderful heat is off all the sauce is evenly distributed in the ingredients all that remains is to fill the pies top them and bake one of them I'm keeping the other one in the fridge I could freeze it but I'd rather just have it later this week this is going to be a lot easier if you do this right over the stove I did buy myself a little gadget since I've seen you last and I just love this thing it's like a triangular ladle sort of but the corners are soft which means you can get into the edges of the pan and get everything out of it instead of just some of it okay now for this you'll notice I'm coaxing the uh, contents with the tongs into the ladle because I do want to get this even I just put that in a lump in the middle and just keep divvying that up between them till you're done which won't take that long now if you by chance have made absolutely too much filling it just won't fit you can always refrigerate it and get out another pie shell or get some tarts or just eat it on rice when no one's looking because by the way if you don't want to go with the pies eh, this is just awesome on rice as is and while I'm filling these you know just take a minute to reflect the food costs on these things okay just one of these out of the deli section at the store is going to be an insane price and they don't even have this much stuff in it okay this is basically three chicken breasts some a few vegetables and a couple of pie crusts that you could actually make yourself for next to nothing if you know how to make pie crust which I know I should do one day but I don't know if that's wise for health reasons <laughs> the pies are all mounded up and gorgeous there just get a bit of the breadcrumbs and start in the middle because uh, if you start on the sides it's gonna just kinda drip over you wanna kinda have these fall down 
and you can start moving around to the edges carefully. You can also use a spoon for this if you want. Um, I have clean hands and I do like to do it this way. Now once you have enough crumbs on that you're not actually going to touch the filling. This is an important thing because you don't want to be doing that. So you can kind of just gently, gently smooth those out towards the edges. Maybe cover up any stray carrots like that that have gotten away from you. And yes, it's not totally even, but that's one of the best things about home cooking anyways. And for those of you out there that just want to get things right, at some point just give it up, okay? Don't start picking off each other's pies there. What you should do is make an effort to get the fallen crumbs off the cookie sheet before you pop them in the oven because yes, those will burn and hopefully not set off your smoke alarm. I had neglected to mention that I had turned the oven down from 400 to 350 because you do the crust at 400 but you actually bake the pie at 350. Now, um, I'm going to be removing one of these now, and let it cool off and then put it in the fridge to look how big that is. Eh? Cook that sometime later. And this one, I'll just set her nicely on the tray. Again, any bits of crust or whatnot that are still on there, pick those off before so they don't burn in the oven. And pop that in at 350 for half an hour or 30 minutes. Time's up. Take a look. The breadcrumbs have browned nicely. The outside of the crust is cooked, but it's not burnt, which is why you decrease the heat. It looks great, so what I'm going to do is just let it cool off here for a while, and then I'll cut it open and give you a look. Uh, before I move it, I thought I'd give you a side shot, just so you can see just how much is in that. A bit of a change from the one of the story. It's cooled down enough, I can cut it. This might get a little messy, because this is more spatula the knife material. The crust is fairly tender. So that came out pretty good. Let me see if I can scooch that over and get this off without making a big mess. I did let it cool off a bit more than I usually would just so I could pick up the pan for you. Well, dinner's going to be a bit sloppy, but it doesn't matter. So there's the finished product. Uh, the sauce is nice and thick. It's not runny. Everything stayed together. And yes, trust me, I've made this before. It does taste as good as it looks. I do hope you give this a shot, and I hope to see you again sometime. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.